Um, let's go to Lionel. Pronouns are he, him in Mississippi. Wondering our thoughts on determinism. Uh, Lionel, I hopefully I'm saying the name right. Thank you for calling. And uh, yeah, Dan, um, what are your thoughts on it? On deter like hard determinism, like the universe um, from the very beginning kind of determines everything that happens to us now in the here and now. Like I, 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 I believe that to some degree. I think so. I think free will is kind of a real iffy concept. I don't think that necessarily means, I don't know if that makes me a compatibilist if I do think that like personal responsibility factors because like our abilities to make decisions is still a part of a bigger system, if that makes sense. I would say that I'm a pretty hard determinist though. I don't know. Are, are you the same way? Uh, yeah, I, I lean towards that. Uh, yeah. Lionel, what would be your specific, your thoughts on this so we could... Uh... I'd be able to address, uh, or we could address yeah. something more specific to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I've been thinking about an argument and I created one and I just was thinking, uh, I'm going to call in and see what y'all think about it. Okay, sure. Go for it. All right. So premise one is that, um, actions that occur in nature are determined. Humans are a part of the natural world. Therefore, uh, human actions are determined. Um, yeah, so you would I mean you have to substantiate the first premise, right? Because if you're just stating that it's determined all actions and like that, I'm worried you might beg the question because that might encompass uh, whether it be, I don't really I wish Shannon was here because I'll, I'll totally butcher neuroscience stuff, but with the firing of axons or neurons or, or however that works, uh, mm -hmm. I think that would be embodied under the first premise under natural causes if that what was the first premise again to make sure i can uh i'm not uh actually getting it wrong actions that actions that occur in nature are determined yeah and so an action would occur by humans would fall under that umbrella for the first premise so it seems like you would affirm what's called affirming the consequent i believe uh it seems like you would just be setting out to prove what you're already trying to prove in the first place because that would to me be nested in that i think i think it's for me it's easier than that this is the way that i think about it um so we have an event right uh you could say at t1 right time one uh j mike chooses some uh let's say some a coke over water okay i decided to drink a soda over water so i can choose a or b now when we go back we have to we have to ask our question what explains why i chose the coke over the water um the way that i look at that is that you have a true dichotomy there. You have, there's an explanation that explains why I chose the uh, uh, the soda over the water, or there's no explanation. And if you say that there's no explanation, that infers randomness, right? So we can kind of rule that out to the side. And if you say there's an explanation, we only know about explanations in virtue of like causal series or things that have ant what, what you would call an antecedent factor, which what I mean by that is just a factor that's prior to the uh, factor in question. And so you have that all the way down. And so when you ask the question at T1, what explains why J Mike chose the Coke over the water? If you say it's explained, I don't even know where free will exists. So to me, you don't have to really mm. put the argument in the premise. You just have to ask somebody in virtue of what, if you explain the event that I chose the Coke over the water, where does where does a breakage in physical laws all of a sudden come into play? Like, how could you say, well, free will was nested in there because we're talking yeah. about something that's completely governed by physical laws that don't break this series all the way mm -hmm. through. So that would be kind and, of my position. And, and this is too, and of course I want to let the caller respond, but th this is how some people come to this compatibilist point of view because they say, well, you know, even though everything that's happening is a series of natural events, you can still consider part of that like free will. Like this is what people like Daniel Dennett say. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I'm with you in the same boat, J. Mike. If you take somebody like a very famous example, like Phineas Gage, for example, this man who had this, you know, this railroad spike stuck in his head or anybody who is exposed to like lead in their youth or something. Right. Like that's going to affect their decision making process for whatever they do. And that's a totally a totally mechanical cause we can look at. And show like, well, look, if this mechanical process is affecting people's decision making, then it, it could also follow naturally that, you know, that entire decision making process should be mechanical. Because if one mechanical part can affect it, 
then you know who's to say that it's not completely all mechanical right so that that's what i think of when i think of like our decision making process i do think it's all natural i do think it's mechanical whether you want to call something in their free will or not that's fine but it's definitely not like there's definitely not like another realm governing me like there's definitely not like a soul part of that process because it wouldn't make sense why would my physical body have anything to do with my internal sense of self if you know there wasn't a connection there right so anyway yeah lionel what would you what would you think about our, our thoughts on that uh yeah that makes a lot of sense uh i'm actually like new to like learning arguments and debates and philosophy and so that's the main reason i called because i wanted to like present an argument and the main thing is i wanted to know where i may be wrong in my argument so i can maybe try to make it better and you brought up compatibilism and I was thinking uh, actually on compatibilism that it's it's in between it's like a how do you put it it's a uh, it's an agreement between people who ha who believe in free will and believe in you know hard determinism it's it mm -hmm. yeah, I almost kind of viewed it as well you're either an atheist or you're a theist well there's people who are deists and it's like yeah, it's kind of a cop out you know. Either there are hard determinists or you believe in free will. And I think people who share this compatibilist view is kind of like, you know, doing the same thing as a deist. Like, uh, well, you know, you kind of have free will. You kind of, yeah, it's kind of determined. But, well, well sure, the, uh, yeah. They're, but they're, they're redefining the will is the difference there, right? They're saying that, that, that free will and uh, determinism are compatible, um, right? But what they're, sure. saying, what they're saying in virtue of doing that is – is a redefinition of the will um and kind of to what dan said i think like uh dan dennett's like what you call an eliminativist um and so like there, mm -hmm. there's different ways that you mm -hmm. can view this from different philosoph philosophical scopes right because you know determinism this is really large implications for human society right you know there's a lot of stuff in philosophy that at the end of the day sometimes it's just navel gazing but if you really think about what we consider you know how we consider a, a good functioning justice system should look like right there are some people that go so far as to say well if we if this is totally external if this is a completely natural thing then what does it mean to hold moral agents accountable for their actions right if we can find naturalistic causes for the you know the reasoning for all of their decision making then how can we hold somebody accountable for things that are ultimately not under their control so that's that's a really fascinating thing and that's why it's really worth looking into to see what does it mean to hold somebody accountable for these things how do we determine the difference between something that's externally guiding someone's decisions versus this something inside of us that we can like hold accountable to um, for our decision making. And it's really hard. I don't know all the answers to it. I don't know what the best answer is. I do know, I do think rather that everything that led up to my point, including being on this call in show, has been because of a series of natural events and not necessarily anything metaphysical. Um, and that's kind of where I draw the line personally. Yeah. And I, I would worry about the first uh, premise. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Lionel. Oh, no. Um, I was just about to say is you know i'm in law enforcement and i'm mm -hmm. a hard determinist and so it's kind of hard for me to enforce a law for example and sure. when i believe this person couldn't have done other than what they did you know yeah. it's it's so i just wanted to i just wanted to make that point but uh i'm sorry go ahead yeah no Im implications of things are you know that's something to be to consider i had watched uh a debate a friend of mine had with somebody that was that was also an atheist but they believed in libertarian free will and they kept just bringing up moral implications and and that's those those are secondary right my th biggest thing is when people talk about certain things that does no indic to me it shows i'm not saying you're doing this but there's some form of bias to me when someone's like not willing to believe in determinism which could be the true states of affairs right regardless of what we think or care that could just be the state of affair and if somebody goes well the implications bother me that has no bearing on the truth value of determinism it is either true sure. or it's false and so sure. getting hung up on that like people do sometimes in debates it's like it's irrelevant because what i care about is truth uh, you know you can deal with these types of things um secondary and there's uh positions in philosophy like what's called uh consequentialism which is like this mm -hmm. idea that moral actions um 
you look at whether something's wrong or right in virtue of these consequences. And for me, it still seems to be that if some legislator or something proposed some law, and let's say that law was supposed to save 10,000 people or something, right? But it, or it, at the end of the year, it would protect, you know, X amount of lives, but instead it actually causes more people to die. We would still say that person's morally responsible, regardless of if their volition was otherwise, like they, they mm -hmm. wanted something else, but that wasn't the case. So for me, the question, especially with moral uh, implications, I don't know how relevant it is uh, from the same reason that, you know, if you do some action and you had free will and it didn't result in the thing that you wanted, you would still be responsible for the outcome. And yeah. that's, I think, what we have to look at is just the well, outcome. Some people, some people take determinism, they, they misunderstand the application and say, oh, well, it, that must mean that nothing is preventable, that everything is just going to happen and it will happen. And that's not necessarily true, right? So like the institution of law enforcement in a particular area will affect um, somebody's actions, whether you like it or not, right? For some people, there are some people who will literally not do something because a cop is looking at them and they may, <laughs> they may do it because a, a cop isn't looking at them. You know, like that being a factor at play is still in the determinist system would still affect the outcome, right? Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, it's the reason why we create these kinds of preventative institutions to, you know, just people in the society uh, uh, agree to these you know, kinds of laws and stuff, or, or maybe they don't agree to it. And the entire system is unjust. If you're an anarchist, you know, there obviously yeah. there's different political philosophies at play there, but like that, you know, it doesn't just because the, a determinist system exists doesn't mean that you can't change the outcome. It just means that it has to be done through naturalistic means rather than any metaphysical ones. Sure. Right. That that's, that's, that's where I think that's how I like to think about it anyway. But yeah, because there's actually a distinction you what you could take determinism or what some people call ne necessitarianism, which is this idea yeah. that the world could only be one way, right? Right. Um, yeah. And that's not necessarily the thesis of somebody that could be a determinist. So, so yeah, what Dan's sure. saying there is absolutely, in my from my perspective, is absolutely right. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, Lionel, well, any, any, <laughs> oh, sorry, Dan, go ahead. No, I was just saying we we we've gone all around this topic, and I don't know if we fully answered Lionel's question, which was, yeah. "Do we think his argument is sound?" And I don't, <laughs> I don't I, know because I've forgotten his premises now. I do not because yeah. the first premise says that something about all, all of nature is determined, but his conclusion is trying to conclude some part of nature being determined. But he's already he's already looked at the whole and determined that right. So this would be a um, this would be a fallacy one that, yeah. that you could I believe you call fallacy of division where you look at a whole and then try to say like the part of it has the same property uh, mm -hmm. but you're also trying to use the whole to prove that so it seems yeah i would you couldn't it's not that you couldn't reformulate the premise right it's just that that formulation of it um is is fallacious yeah i i would tend to agree with you so there you go okay that's well it well, that's good because, it, and that's and that's the main reason I called because I wanted my argument and I wanted y'all to pick it apart. That way, I know how I can like reform it or rephrase it. That way, I can make it better. You know, so so yeah, yeah, excellent. And, and just I, keep well, in mind when you conclude so. that that if the conclude if the one of the premises establishes the whole, and you're trying to prove the same thing within the part, you already did that in the first premise, right? Yep. And that, that would be the problem because the problem would be like you're supposed to conclude with that, not use it as the premise or not to not to beg the question. So I would just look at that when you reformulate it and that'll that'll help you probably find something that actually deductively follows. Yeah, I would agree. OK, I think that's all for that call then. All right. Th thank you, Lionel. Perfect. Right, appreciate it. Now, the question is, could that call have gone any other way? Sure. Um, you know, could we have changed the outcome in some way? Yeah. When uh, when I talked, have... when I talked over you, it was determined. So you know, I could, <laughs> I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't help it. So, right. Right. Yeah. Of course.